thank you so much for joining me this beautiful day so today we're gonna look at the launch of Moal. okay so those of you who are in swal single with a life you know that i've just started a new vision so um, i've been running single with a life for four years february 13th this year was when we celebrated our fourth year and so uh, by the grace of god i've come up with this new vision from day one when i started swal i knew that the time is coming that i will start moal which is married with a life but i didn't know how long it would take even though this vision is very simple and it's such that i could have still run it alongside swal i noticed that even with swal I had a lot of struggle with people. Okay, so people were questioning, um, you know, you're not married, you're not married. What do you think? Uh, um, you know that you should be equipping singles for better marriage, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and I was thinking, wow, Swal is not even about marriage. Swal really is about effective singleness. Okay, so we are believing that as you become effective, as a single all-round development, it prepares you, it puts you in a better position towards your marriage, okay? So that is what the Swal Vision really is about. But then people had this misconception that, you know, it's about marriage, it's about marriage. It's more to do with things that you can start doing now that will prepare you for your future. And if marriage is part of that future, praise the Lord, okay? So the Swal Vision is a bit different from uh, Moal. So Moal really is where, you know, I'll be using some of my experience and then, um, you know, the experience of others, books that I've read and all of that. And by the grace of God, if you are, if you just got married, Moal is really, really going to help you because I've also just got married not long ago. Literally, tomorrow will be three months when I got married. Okay, so um, I'm still learning. And things, you know, right from preparing when you start a courtship and you start planning your wedding and you get married, you go on the honeymoon and you come together, living together. You know, all, all of that is a journey that I think that as a single person is very good for you to know. Um, with you, thank God, my husband is very open. Okay, some of you who are on the Moa group uh, yesterday, was yesterday or two days ago, he posted something and it was very, very real. Okay, so um, some of these things we may share, um, the things that we feel would benefit our singles and those of you who just, just got married. Okay, there's something about married people. Sometimes they feel like because some people feel because they've been married for years, they've got experience. Okay, but sometimes it's not all about the experience. Okay, somebody can be, be married for maybe one year, and they may have a better marriage or they, they will get good, they have good examples to give to people than somebody who have been married for years. So it's not all about experience. It's about, it's about um, knowledge and how to actually implement that knowledge to help you. Because as we know, every marriage is different, okay? And um, yeah, so I found God that God has made it possible for me to come up with this vision because the, the fear was that you know, even with Moa, they're already, with Swa, they're already kicking against it. How much more if I should start Moa as a single person? It, it will even be like, hey, we've never had it before. So I just thought, God, you know what? I'm just going to be patient, wait um, at the right time. When God opens the door, I will start the Swa, the Moa vision. And I can tell you, it would have got to a point, even if I wasn't married, I would have started Moa anyway, at least with my singles who got married because... I even started it before, we, before I got married. I started it on the WhatsApp group and it was more of prayers. So we used to pray and I didn't really give it much attention because Swal was my main focus. Okay, so now God has made it possible for me to be able to run this vision. Okay, so I just want to also use this opportunity to say thank you to the singles who got married and are now called uh, Moalians, okay? So thank you so much for sending your photos. 
I did a video whereby um, I stated that we had at least 23 people getting married from Swal. And um, I know there are more people who got married, but those that I know, those who have told me that they got married, they are the ones that have counted as the 23. And it also includes the people that we celebrated on the group, okay? Because there are some people who sometimes they get married and they leave the group, so we are not aware that they are married. Sometimes I will hear that, oh, this person got married, it's okay. The person used to be a Swalian, but I can't count it because they didn't tell me, okay? And um, especially we've had issues with our Nigerians who, at least two times, a Nigerian got married, they didn't tell us. By the time I knew, the person has left the group because they got married. And I'm thinking, you've been here for years, you've been praying, you're married now, tell us, you know? So even though the video, the launch video is saying it's 23 people who got married, we've actually got more people getting married, okay? We've got 23 Moalians getting, starting this vision uh, by the grace of God. So God bless you for sending your, your photos and all of that, because I know some people don't want their marriages to be out there. So God bless you for your support, for the vision. And I also want to thank God for our coordinators, for being very strong, the SWAL coordinators, for your support so far, and for all Swalians for your support. God bless you. Okay, so, so, so. Um, married with a life. Moal is born out of Swal. So Swal is the mother of Moal. Because without Swal, without singleness, they wouldn't be married. Every human being goes through singleness. There is nobody who was born with a ring on their finger. Hey, I'm married already. Nobody. Okay. So you will always go through that period whereby at some stage they call you single. I mean, when you are 13 years, nobody will call you single because you are still, you are an adolescent, okay? You are young, so nobody will refer to you as single. But when you get to a certain age whereby everybody thinks, oh, this is a marriageable age, okay? From that time, when there is no marriage yet, you are referred to as single, okay? So singleness is very important because everybody goes through it. And your singleness, the state of your singleness will determine the state of your marriage. So if you are not happy as a single, there is no guarantee that when you get married, you'll be happy. Okay, there is no guarantee. So singleness is very, very important. For those of you who are singles, you may be thinking, oh, uh, because we are now, we now have a different vision, a new vision, you know, you are no longer important and all of that. No, your, your stage is even more important than anything else. It's very, very important. One of the reasons why I started this vision also is that most of the time when we have orientation, we have people asking the question, what would um, happen if I get married? What will happen to me? Do I have to leave the group, the singles group? What would happen? And I kept saying that you don't have to leave because there will be an, another vision that will cater uh, for you. So the main reason for Moal is to provide a platform where our singles who got married in Swal can continue to equip themselves. Okay, so they can continue to grow and become better and, you know, have the better marriage that we've been equipping ourselves towards. Yeah. So at the moment, we are operating from WhatsApp. We've got an international WhatsApp group. So we've got people from UK, Nigeria, Ghana. These are the three countries that we currently have on the Moal WhatsApp group. Okay, and um, the WhatsApp group is exclusive to Moalians. So if you were once a Swalian and you got married, you can get in touch with me. Okay, by the grace of God, I remember most of the Swalians. So I would ask you a few questions. And if I feel you have to join the WhatsApp group, I will let you join. It's not a guarantee. It is not a guarantee that immediately you contact me, 
you will join. No. If you are a non Moalian or a non Swalian, you've never been through Swal, but then you want to join Moal, the WhatsApp group, you can also get in touch. Again, it is not a guarantee that you will be added to the group. Okay, I will have to, you know, ask you a few questions. And if I'm comfortable that you are, you meet the requirement, I will add you. Okay. Um, we have a YouTube channel, which that one, you don't need my permission to, to follow. Okay. Anybody, whether you are single, you are married, whatever your position, even if you're a teenager, you want to follow, you can go and then subscribe. Okay, so the, the channel is married with a life underscore moal. Married with a life underscore moal. Or you can check my timeline. If you go on Facebook under Peace Amewowo, you will see um, the link to the YouTube channel. Just click on it, it will take you there straight you subscribe and then there is a bell at the right hand side of the subscribe button. So when you click on that bell, it means that you would have notifications anytime we are, anytime we upload new videos. Okay. And then we have a Facebook page where you are watching me right now from. Okay. So again, with the Facebook page, if you're a single, if you're a married person, you want to follow, you can follow. It is open to everyone. Okay, so um, one of the questions that I have been getting as well, in fact, this question comes almost every orientation. What will happen to Swal when the CEO gets married? Again, nothing happens to Swal. Swal is still existing because there, sh there will always be singles, okay? And in fact, the Swal vision is more important to me than the Moal vision, because it is through Swal that we, we got Moal, okay? And as I explained before, the state of your singleness will determine the state of your marriage. So actually, if there is anything that we need to pay more attention to, it is singleness, so that when we get into marriage, it won't be as difficult as we keep hearing people saying that it is difficult, it is difficult, it is hard and all of that. There are some people, life is not hard to them. There are some people, marriage is not hard, okay? It's all based on their background, the training they've had, their maturity and all of that. Because somebody will say to you that marriage is hard. Maybe their definition of a hard marriage is because um, is that they are not able to forgive easily. Okay, maybe every time they have to um, be forgiving somebody and it is hard. And there are some people that is not a hard thing to do. There are some people, in fact, if you like, come and beg a hundred times, they will forgive you a hundred times. So for them, your definition of a hard marriage is not hard for them. Okay, so everybody is different. Everybody is different too, but it's based on your maturity and how you handle things. That will, that will determine what will be hard for you in marriage and what will not be hard. Everybody is different. Okay, so singleness is um, important. And I'm not going to say that because I'm married, Swal is no longer going to function. No. Swal is my vision. Moal is also my vision. And as long as earth and heaven remains, there will always be singles, there will always be married people. Okay? The, what is going to change or probably get better is um, the way I'm going to merge the two. Okay? Because those of you who work a lot on social media or those of you who have ministries and you have Facebook pages, YouTube channels, you know that it's not easy to be uploading videos from this, to the, from this platform and go to another platform, unless, of course, you've got a device where you can stream from all the channels at the same time, then it makes it very easy. 
Okay, but at the moment, I don't have that yet. I'm trusting God that, you know, very soon that will become possible. However, for now, I'm working with what I have. So what I will do is um, there are some messages or some teachings that would benefit, benefit a single person and also benefit a married person at the same time. So I will try and merge those so that when I do a video, a broadcast, there will be a message in that broadcast that is speaking to singles and then speaking to married people at the same time. So in that case, if you are a single person, it means that you are actually getting double. You are, you are, you are at a more advantageous position because you get to learn about singleness and you get to learn about marriage before you even get there, which is a plus to you. Okay, so feel free to join. I mean, follow all the channels. It will really, 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 really help you. Okay, um, what else do I want to say? Let me throw a little bit light on the, the moral vision itself. So it's a platform for singles, our singles who got married, to continue to equip themselves. And if anybody else who maybe you've never been through my vision and you, you want to follow, you can also follow and benefit from it. There is a quote that I keep hearing from the late Dr. Miles Monroe. He said, married people are the most loneliest people on earth. And um, when I was single, I thought, what a statement, you know, because when you are single, you feel like, oh, I'm so lonely. Who can I talk to? You are in a hurry. You want to get married because you feel like, oh, when you get married, your husband will always be at home. Right now, I'm at home. My husband is not here. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, we came from church and he has to go somewhere. So, so um, you are in a hurry. All of you get married. When I get married, my husband will always be there. When you are single, you think, oh, loneliness will die. In fact, it has... Is it will die immediately you get married. But Dr. Miles Morrow is saying that married people are the most loneliest people on earth. So I've been trying to digest it and, you know, I kind of get what he's trying to say. The reason is because when you are married, even when you are courting, during the counseling towards the, the marriage, you'll be told, or even your family will tell you, Friends will tell you, you have to keep everything a secret. You know, whatever happens in your marriage is between you and your husband. Nobody should know, blah, blah, blah. And it's true. Nobody should. Who cares? You know, you don't have to broadcast everything that is going on in your marriage. You don't have to put it as a public. You know, you don't have to. Unless, of course, if you have a ministry like mine whereby you want to impact lives, there are certain things that you would learn from your marriage that you, would, you can put out there so that somebody will learn from it. But if it's not for the purpose of teaching, you don't need to, okay? And even, even if it's for the purpose of teaching, it's not everything that you will put out there, okay? And because people, married people, are trying to conceal and protect their marriage, um, sometimes they pretend, okay? They can, they can really pretend, a married person can fight with their husband right now. They step out and they, they've wiped their face. They're looking all, they're pretending that everything is fine because they don't want people to see and say that you are, you are having issues in your marriage. Okay. So because of that, if a married person is having a challenge, it is difficult to get help. It is difficult for them to come out and say. And so... That can make their life very, very difficult because there is nobody really to talk to. And then you come home, the person that you are with maybe is also not available to talk to. So then who should we talk to? It becomes a struggle and that can cause loneliness. Okay. Um, some married people also exaggerate. They try to make things look good things to look great on the outside, 
but then deep within they will be hurting or they are dying okay when married people meet like let's say five married people meet everybody wants to appear to be the one who is uh, enjoying their marriage who is happy they'll pretend so unfortunately you know um many people many people are not telling us the truth the the singles there are so many truths about marriage that we don't know okay and the reason is because our married people unfortunately um they have to protect their marriage they have to protect their integrity that is one of the contracts if i should put it that way about marriage you've got to protect it and so because of that it's not everything that a married person will come out and tell you it's just a few the few who really have the mindset that they want to transform somebody or help somebody's life they would actually go into details and tell you that you know what this is what it is this is what it you know and i can tell you that there are things that i had there are things that i i knew i read i saw other people do and all of that which i got married i realized that it's not as true as it is okay so by the grace of god i'll be sharing my my next topic probably is going to be about expectations okay and i will share more about some of the expectations that singles have before they get married and these expectations are they correct are they right are they wrong we will see okay i had my own expectations before i got married some of them i got married as i'm like i married people they lied they lied <laughs> honestly any time i say it, it's like i said to my husband are you sure we are married <laughs> you know it's like things are so different and i'm just like you know anyway so they always say every marriage is every marriage is um, different so and it depends on the people the two people that's why singleness is important because the two people determines if the marriage is going to go well or it's not going to go well or that kind of thing okay so um married people can also lose their sense of purpose okay there are some people who before they got married they were very very passionate about life they really wanted life to happen some pursued they were so zealous as a, as a single person they were zealously pursuing their vision until they got married and then it's like it's like almost something just said stop they just put a stop stop and they stopped and now they are wondering what is the meaning of life why am i even here yeah i had the opportunity to to sit with a, a married person some years ago god is amazing you know that was a was it even at the beginning of swal or i think so maybe the beginning of swal this lady from work um she has been married for 23 years one day she just came to me she said i want to divorce and i said why and why are you telling me i'm a single person at that time i was even in a relationship why are you telling me what what should i do and she was saying to me that she feels i can advise her i said really so anyway we started talking about it and at work because of the way we are seated there are certain things that you don't want other people to hear so i said to her i'll come home do you want me to come to your house she said yes i will speak to my husband i said okay i go to the house and the husband and the wife they sat down and we started talking and you know it became clear to me that there was a problem of vision there was a problem of vision and um the the lady when she was single she used to be very zealous she loved god she was doing everything um running her, she wanted to run her vision and serving and all of that but a man didn't have any vision and the man actually joined her in church so that he can marry her so he didn't really love god but just for for um him to get the girl's attention you know she he went to church 
And then, no vision. So they got married after 20 something years. The woman realized that she's stuck. If she feels like she's stuck, there's nothing, she, she's not doing anything, she can't do anything. The man is not bringing up anything new. They are just there, you go to work, come, and it's like no sense of purpose. And she was frustrated. And, and once you don't know vision, you don't have your vision, you don't know where you are going in life, you don't have a sense of purpose, you, there is frustration, frustration was setting. So she was feeling very, very frustrated. So I realized that that was the issue. Okay, um, by the grace of God, the rest is history. But, you know, um, people can lose their sense of purpose when they get married. Um, they'll be wondering, why am I still living? Why am I even still with this person? They lose all their dreams. Okay, there are some people who, when they were single, they wanted to do this. I will do that, I want to do that, I want to do that. And then they get married, it's like... And sometimes it's because of, you know, one of my pastors who say, the vicissitudes of life, things can happen. You know, maybe the person that you, you got married to may not be as encouraging as you thought. They may not be as supportive as you thought or as you want. And because of that, some things can be left undone. Okay. Um, some also have lost their spiritual connectivity. Recently, I was speaking to my sister and I said to her, you, you have to pray, 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 because I remember that when she was single, she knew every prophet in town. She knew every prophet. She, she knew all the prayer comes because she was aware that something was fighting her marriage, her marriage from coming forth. Okay, so... She, she was always fasting, always praying, always in church. And some of us, before we got married, were like that. But now, immediately we got married, we felt we have arrived. We felt the demon that was chasing us during singleness has left us. So we stopped praying. We stopped going to church. We stopped reading the word. In fact, we have lost our spiritual connectivity. connectivity. Yeah? And... And because of that, there are things that are happening that shouldn't be happening. Okay, because I've, I, I heard there was a statement somebody made that the grace that, um, how do I even put this? The amount of grace that took you from a place to another level is the same grace that you need to keep you in that level. I don't know how to put it so that it's it, it simple. So basically, if it took you a lot of fasting to receive your marriage, it means that it will take you a lot of fasting to keep that marriage. The reason is because that demon, that witch, that wizard, the person that wanted to stop your marriage from happening. Okay, some of you, you know how you, you got married. You, knew, you know how you cried how you pushed to get married. That same push is what you need to keep the marriage. Because the person or the, that spirit that wanted to stop you has not left you. Just because you've got married does not mean they've left you. They are just looking for an opportunity. So if you don't guard that marriage, then you see that things start happening and you are wondering, you are wondering what's going on. What's going on? What's going on? Okay, so this is why Moal is here. Um, to literally reconnect you back to the things that you used to do as a single, which were good. Okay. Um, another way most married people have lost it is that they have lost touch with themselves. Some people, especially women, no longer bother about their looks. Okay, oh, I've married. I've had three children. Who, who is looking at me? My husband, we are always here. He sees me. He knows how I look. Why should I do makeup? Why should I touch? Why should I look nice? My hair. My hair is not smelling. Well, he's fine. My husband loves me the way I am. My wife loves me the way I am. So even if my mouth is smelling, it's fine. She loves me. Okay, so we've lost touch with ourselves. 
there are some people sometimes uh, the reason why sometimes I have to just wake up and jog <laughs> is because I hear people say oh I used to be so slim I used to be hey I used to have a nice figure and now look at me after three children after one, one child see so every time they say that, then I don't have to wait and get to that level. You know, let me start now. Let me start taking care of myself now. And if you're a single person, this is a very good message for you because you don't have to wait until you get married and then start having children. Because naturally, once you have children, you are likely to put on weight. Okay. And there are some people that naturally there's nothing they can do about the way they look because somebody can have a child and it, it may be through cesarean okay and they can't really work much on their tummy because of the pain so such a person as a people to the fall sick out of the sickness you can't be doing so much vigorous activity when you are physically you are not well so it makes them to put on weight okay they lose their shape and there are so many people who get married they have children and they lose their confidence because of that so as a single person you don't wait till that time you start taking care of your health now if you have to work on your tummy, I mean, I don't see why as a single person you should have a big tummy if you're not sick. If it's not because of some illness, um, that may be because of that you're unable to control um, your, your shape. Yeah? If you're not sick, if you're healthy, I don't see why you should have a big tummy when maybe a, even a married person that is around you who has had three children is even having a flat tummy and then you who has, you've never been married, and you look like you don't have to okay so work on yourself if you have to jog jog if you have to join a gym in fact gym maybe you say that a gym is expensive then jog it's free it's free to jog and actually if you want to lose weight quickly jogging is the best you just do three times 30 30 minutes three times a week. You will see, do it for one month. You will see the change. Okay, so this is a free advice to the singles. As some people too who are just, things have been so difficult for them in their marriage to the extent that now they are just waiting to die. They just want to die. They wish their partner would die. Oh, they are just waiting. Die so that I can move on. Die so that I can marry somebody else. It is true. I mean, before when I used to hear this, it was like, oh, but when you hear things that people are going through in their marriages, literally there are some people who just, they, they don't feel like living anymore. They wish they would just die so that everything would just end. Okay, so many married people may not have a life. They are not having a quality life as a person. They are not really enjoying themselves. They are not really happy. Okay, and once you lose touch, with your spirituality, once you lose your spiritual connectivity, you lose touch with yourself, you don't have a sense of purpose, you don't know why you are living anymore. It, it, just, it just means that you don't, you don't really have a life. You don't have a quality life. And when I say that married with a life, I mean somebody who is still productive, somebody who is still effective, somebody who is still, who is still having a quality life. No matter the number of children you've had, no matter how long you've been married for, no matter what is going on in your life, you are still fulfilled as a person, okay? And it takes effort. You've got to work it. You've got to work it. You've got to work it. So this is why the moral vision is here to help us to reconnect to some of the things, the good things that, that gave us fulfillment, which we have neglected immediately we got married okay because some of us it's because we stopped doing some of these things we used to do so many things we used to have ambitions we used to take care of ourselves we used to look nice look good and then we got married and we felt like oh my husband is fine my wife is okay i don't need to do much and so we stopped doing some of these things so these are the things that moal want to do just to remind you. So it's more like a, a reminder to say, hey, wake up. Wake up. Go and do your hair again. Wake up. Go and fix your nails again. Wake up. Do that makeup. 
wake up, go to the gym. The men, some of you used to want to have sex pack. Now, even the one pack you are struggling to have because you got married. Your wife has been feeding you with kenke and banku and, and fufu and your tummy has suddenly shot up. And you look at yourself and say, hey, where is my six pack? You can still go back. Okay, so that is what the swell, the moal vision is. Very simple. Just to reconnect you. Just to remind you of some of the things that, you know, you used to do. You used to do them. They are not new. You used to do them. Just that you probably have become lazy or because of the responsibilities. Because, of course, when you have children, when you have another person you have to look after and all of that. It's a, it's a lot of responsibility. And if you're not careful, you can easily lose yourself. You can forget about yourself easily, easily. Because if you are home, sometimes if I'm not going anywhere, if I'm not going to work and I'm at home, I don't feel like doing anything serious. I'm at home. Why should I do makeup? Why should I... You know, it's easy for, for you to think you are not going anywhere, so you shouldn't look good. But why would you dress up and go outside for people to see how you look good and then you come back home and you are not looking good? When the person that you, are actually, you actually have to look good for is there with you and every time they're only seeing the, the worst side of you. It shouldn't be that way. Okay, so it's an effort that we need to put in a conscious you you can't i think that with the with the little experience i have personally apart from what i've heard and what i've um, i've read you can't afford to lose your consciousness you can't because immediately you lose sight of the things you have to do if you're not careful things will start going wrong in the marriage okay so you have to always be conscious always be conscious if you use to bath twice what stops you from bathing twice that is another discussion on its own should a married person bath once a day or twice a day it's another discussion we can have but you know what stops you from from doing the things that you have to do okay so responsibilities or no responsibilities you've got to make the effort You've got to consciously remind yourself, me running Moal, it's for me, I see it like it's more for me to keep me on my toes. Because for four years, I've run Swal with the help of, you know, a few people that were around, mentors that I had, coordinators who would give me advice, who would give me counsel, uh, my husband who has always been my best friend from day one, you know, um, giving me directions and all of that it is very easy that oh now that you are you are married to lose sight on what you've already started so for me even this vision is to keep me on my toes to still do to still do sometimes i have to wake up early and join the singles to pray on the group because these were things that i used to do and the fact that i'm married now if i don't push myself to do it I may lose it okay so it's for me as well to keep on my toes and this vision is not to say that I have arrived or I'm better than anybody or I know than anybody I'm still learning I'm still learning and I'm still discovering things there are things that I've discovered you know that I'm thinking wow wow there are things that I've discovered about my husband that you know earlier on i shared that he he shared some of these things on our whatsapp group and you know before he sent it on the group he he wanted me to have a look at it i said okay you send it he sent it and i read it i read it and i couldn't laugh i laughed i laughed i said wow 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 these are the things that every day it's like you just have to adjust to certain things just adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. So we are all learning. Nobody is perfect. Nobody can ever arrive. It doesn't matter how long you've been married. You could be married for 60 years, 20 years, one year. It is better to keep your ears open, keep your spirit alert, keep your spirit open to receive, to, to take on new things, to learn new things, to, to keep growing. Okay, so 
open yourself up you may think oh she's only three months old in marriage it's not it's not about the number of years it's not about the number of years so let's be um, open to see what God will do through us and for us through this vision because I believe that this vision is going to be a, ten, a turning point for most people. It's going to be a turning point. And I thank God that um, he's going to work through me and also change my life and make my life better through this vision. Because I can't come and be saying something to you when I'm not doing it. So by the time I come to you to say that, you know what? You have to go back and do this and do that. It means that I've also spoken to myself and looking to do the same. Okay, so that is all it is about the moral vision. And we are looking to um, run it more on Facebook and YouTube. And so if you want to subscribe, you can always subscribe to the Facebook or YouTube, the YouTube channel. All the links are on my timeline. Just go on and then... Um, subscribe so that when i upload new videos you'll be able to um, learn from it okay so i'm going to come up with a series and i may not do a broadcast like this because i'm trying to still figure out how to still touch my singles and touch um, the married people as well so the broadcast is going to the series is going to be about um, my journey so far from wedding honeymoon up to now okay and it's going to literally be about some of the expectations that i had and also address people's mindsets okay because some of us we've got very very bad mindset when it comes to marriage where did you get it from we will address all of that and then um even when you've got your expectations and whether they are good or bad when you finally get into the marriage how do you adjust so that those expectations or not Become, because some of the expectations may not be met. And if you're not careful, you become disappointed. And that's why people divorce, because they feel like, I thought it's going to be like this. Now the person is becoming this. So they leave. Okay. So how do you manage those expectations so that you can still adjust and work on things and get the best out of the relationship or the marriage that you've always wanted to have? Okay. So the series is going to be very powerful. Um, I'll be as real as possible. And if I'm able to get my husband on board, I will try and get him on board so that he can also share his experience um, to help you. So I know this vision is really going to help somebody. It's going to help especially our singles and especially those who just got married. It's really, really going to help you. Okay. So God bless you. I hope to see you all on the YouTube channel by subscribing. Please subscribe. You can subscribe to my personal channel as well. If you type in peace, I'm on YouTube, it will come up. Okay. If it's if you want to subscribe to the Swal Single with a Life, it's Single with a Life underscore Swal, and then we have Married with a Life underscore Moal. All the links are on my timeline. You can just go there and subs and follow the link to subscribe. God bless you. And if you want to join Swal, you can go on the website www.singlewithalife.org. Just follow the WhatsApp button. It will take you to us. Somebody respond to you and then we will show you how to join. Okay. Um, that's all it is. At the moment, moi, we do not have a website yet. Okay. We do not have an email yet. But if you want to email, you can email to info at singlewithalife.org. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye.